Hello and welcome back to CS11. This is lecture 15a, where we'll begin our discussion of classes and objects. Classes are a way to extend the capabilities of the C++ language by defining new types. Let me remind you, types such as integer and double already exist in the language. And what we're going to be able to do by using classes is to define new types. For example, we're going to develop a class called book in the next couple of videos. And once we've done that, once we've explained to the system, you know, what is a book, then we'll be able to create books the same way that we can create integers or doubles. In C++ language, we would call the int or double a type and i or d a variable, and you could use that language with these terms, but more commonly we'll refer to book as a class and s as an object. So an object is an instance of a class. The class will be the definition, and then when we use that definition to actually create something, we'll refer to those as objects. All right, now why do we like classes and objects in, in programming? Well, in object-oriented programming, or OOP, which is a style of programming you see in C++ and Java and other languages that feature classes and objects, one of the major concepts is called encapsulation. And the idea with encapsulation is that we can create one or more variables to represent the state of something such as, for example, a book, where we might want to keep track of the name of the book and the number of pages in the book. So we can create variables, and then we can code functions that operate on those variables and then wrap them all together so they travel together so that these functions that require these variables and these variables which require these functions always travel together. In addition to being able to wrap together variables and functions, classes in C++ allow us to grant differing levels of access. For example, private and public access. And this is going to restrict which entities can get at these variables. So if we declare these variables private, then that means that other parts of your program won't be able to access those variables directly. Public portions are accessible. What that means is that we can restrict access to these variables to these functions only. And that means if we put certain types of error checking or bounds checking and so on in these functions here, that we'll be able to guarantee something about the values of these variables in a way that you can't with an ordinary variable. For example, let's say I had a integer called num pages that represented the number of pages in the book. And I write a bunch of functions and code that deals with the number of pages and calculating where to put the table of contents and you know a bunch of other things. And then let's say that due to a bug or a misunderstanding, someone accidentally sets the number of pages to negative 100. That could have bad consequences in the rest of the code. And we might like to say um, num pages uh, can't be a value less than five. Because once you put in you know, the title page and the copyright page and so on, that the minimum number of pages in a book could be five. And in regular C++, there's not any way to make an integer variable and to guarantee that its value is always going to be five or greater. But with object-oriented programming, there is a way to do that because the variable that creates the number of pages can't be get gotten at in general, and its access is going to be limited to a certain number of functions where, for example, we can guarantee that that variable can't be set to be a value less than 5. One other thing that we know from C++ is that variables... One other thing we know from C++ is that variables aren't automatically initialized, which means that they have random garbage values. And the more complex our code is, the bigger a problem this is. So one nice critical feature of classes and objects in C++ is a special kind of function known as a constructor. 
And the purpose of the constructor is to do initialization of your object. And the nice thing about the constructor is that you're guaranteed that it will always be called. It's not possible to create an object and not have the constructor be called for you. So what that means is not only are our variables protected against illegal access, but we can guarantee also that they'll be initialized. So that means that our variables are going to be much more reliable than ever before in C++. All right, well, in the next video, we'll take these ideas and put them together to create a class called Book.